my name is Nazy, and today we're talking about the new Vibe Pro 2. Now the Vibe Pro 2 comes out on June 4th and I was super lucky to get my hands on one early. And a massive thank you to HTC Vive for sponsoring this video. Today I want to talk a little bit about the specs and features of the Vibe Pro 2 and why it may be a suitable option if you're in the market for a new VR headset. But first, I wanted to chat a little bit about the differences between the VR headset so you can better understand the benefits of the Vibe Pro 2, which is important especially if you're a keen Beat Saber player. So the Vibe Pro 2 is a PC VR headset, which means it must be plugged into a VR capable PC for it to be able to work. Headsets like the Oculus Rift S, the HP Reverb G2, and the Vibe Cosmos are also PC VR headsets, which means they can only be used with the PC. Whereas the Oculus Quest is a standalone headset, you don't need a PC to use it, but you do have the option to plug it in if you want. The advantage of a PC VR headset is that it's going to be able to run at higher quality games. Because it's got the graphic processing power, you're always going to get a better resolution, better graphics quality, more detail. So that's the advantage of having a PC VR headset. Whereas the Oculus Quest, because it's only running on the computing power of the headset, the graphics quality is going to be a lot lower than what you get from a PC. So the Vibe Pro 2 uses lighthouse trackers to be able to track the headset and the controllers. And this is really important because it allows it to have more accurate tracking. Lighthouse trackers are essentially little trackers that you place around the room to point down on the area that you play VR. Whereas headsets like the Oculus Rift S, the Vibe Cosmos, and the Oculus Quest, they use inside out tracking. So they have little cameras built into the headset and that's what they use to track the controllers. So this can be beneficial because it's less set up, but you are a lot more limited in what the game can track. So if you're using headset with inside out tracking, if you move your controller outside of that field of view, it's going to lose tracking and when it comes back into that field of view it's, you may experience a bit of lag as it catches up to that tracking. Well, this may not be important for story based games when it comes to games like Beat Saber where you're flailing your arms around at really high speeds and you really want that accuracy that's where the tracking is really important especially at high level Beat Saber gameplay. My understanding is that most pro Beat Saber players do use something like the HTC Vive or the Valve Index that do use lighthouse trackings because they know they're going to get better accuracy and tracking. Or a lot of them also use the Oculus Rift CV1, which is the old Oculus headset that they don't make anymore. Now there's definitely great Beat Saber players that do use other headsets, but from my personal opinion, I really struggle to use headsets that have inside out tracking. I find the tracking just does not keep up with Beat Saber. I find it really frustrating to use. And that's why I always opt for VR headsets that do have external trackings. So things like the Vibe Pro that do use the Lighthouse trackers, they're gonna be able to track what you're doing in VR from a 360 degree angle, rather than the small field of view of what the cameras on the headset have from inside out tracking. Now I've clarified the differences between the VR headsets, let's chat about the Vibe Pro 2 specs. The Vibe Pro 2 is the successor of the popular Vibe Pro headset. For a long time, the original HTC Vive has been a very popular headset among VR enthusiasts, but it has been a while since we've seen a major update. Vive did release the Vive Cosmos and the Cosmos Elite back in 2019, but it was lacking in a few areas. And if you're curious, I have a full video review down below. Now for some specs. The Vibe Pro has given us a massive increase in resolution. There's 2,448 by 2,448 pixels per eye. And this is great because you're going to be able to see way more detail in game. And everything will appear a lot more crisper. I checked out some Half-Life Alex gameplay, of course, and everything looked amazing. Especially running it on ultra settings, you can see the dust from the sunrise coming through the windows and all the reflections in the puddle on the floor. But the biggest difference I noticed was that the text in game was actually readable. Most of the time it's readable, but just kind of that little bit blurry, like it just doesn't feel real. But when wearing this headset, all the text just looks so crisp. It looked like real life essentially. It was also really clear to read my in-game Twitch chat, which is a big deal for me because I spend a lot of time streaming VR games. So to have a crisp looking Twitch chat just kind of makes like long-term use of the VR headset so much nicer and you're not kind of like squinting sometimes. And when I'm comparing my experiences and comparing it to the Valve Index, so there was definitely a big notice there, especially on the text in game and how crisp and clean it looked. The Vi Pro 2 also offers 90Hz and 120Hz refresh rate. So this means gameplay looks smoother and more buttery the higher it is. I personally find Beat Saber is a lot easier to play on a higher refresh rate as well. But depending on your PC specs, it may struggle a little bit with 120Hz. The Vi Pro 2 also has 120 degree horizontal field of view. 
So when you're looking at gameplay, you're able to see a little bit more out of your peripheral vision. So this makes it more immersive and also may give you a little bit of an edge in competitive gameplay. Now, let's chat about the physical specs of the headset. In terms of weight, I actually don't find it too bad. I was worried it was gonna be really heavy because I knew the original one was quite heavy. I think it's a little bit heavier than my Valve Index, but not hugely noticeable. And when it comes to VR headsets, it's not the weight of the headset, it's how you use it. Balancing the weight of the VR headset is probably the most important part when it comes to comfort. For example, my Oculus Quest is the most lightest headset I own, and it is the most uncomfortable headset. I hate wearing it for that reason. I find it so damn uncomfortable, and just after 20 minutes of use, I just wanna rip it off my head. So I think light doesn't necessarily mean comfort. It's how the weight is proportioned and how it sits on your head. So I was really happy with the comfort of the Vi Pro 2, but I did struggle to get it off and on my head a couple of times, but I think that's just kind of getting used to it. It has a thick adjustable strap at the top, and this strap is thicker than the one on the Valve Index, and it's got quite a lot of give as well, so if you've got a bigger head, you can pull it all the way back or all the way forward. It's up to you. And then we have a foam piece at the back of the headset, which has a little dial, which then you can adjust to make it tighter or looser. And then at the front, we have like this velvety kind of cushioning uh, that's velcroed in. And I know some people say they don't like this cushioning. I really like it. I think it's good. So uh, comfort wise, I was really, really relieved that it is actually comfortable, especially when I stream VR games on Twitch for like two to three hours a time. Comfort is just so important to me. So I was really, I streamed this the other night for two to three hours and yeah, didn't have any issues with comfort. So I'm just really relieved. <laughs> now in terms of visual comfort, the Vi Pro 2 has an IPD dial on the side and what the IPD dial does is move the lenses closer or further apart inside the headset. So you want them to basically be the same distance of your eyes are in real life. So that's what adjusts it. It's got a lot of options there. So for comparison, the Oculus Quest only basically has three options for this, whereas this is a dial that you can adjust to get exactly how you like. And there's also an adjustment for lens distance, which I discovered this accidentally. So that's how far the lenses are away from your face, which is really good for glasses. If you wear glasses, so there's a little button at the front that you can pop out the lenses so they're a little bit further away from your face. So definitely valuable if you're wearing glasses. In terms of audio, we have two cushiony earphones that kind of sit on top of your ears. And I found them pretty comfortable. They didn't hurt my ears at all, like a lot of sit-on headsets can do. Also, because I think it creates like a cup kind of effect, it does kind of have this noise cancelling effect where you can't hear yourself talk. So that's always something to get used to. Uh, if you've used other kind of gaming headsets, you're probably used to this. It definitely creates a more immersive environment because you get a little bit of kind of noise cancelling effect. The earphones also have a little lever so you can move it further away from the ear. And this is kind of like on a rotating ball as well. So you can adjust it to exactly how you like. There's also a volume button up and down, which I really enjoy as well. Instead of having to go into settings to turn down volume, you can just quickly adjust it to turn it down. Also, there is a mute button. So if you're in games like VR Chat or Population One, you can quickly just mute yourself in game and unmute when you want. In terms of audio quality, I was actually really happy with the audio quality. It's definitely different to the Valve Index because that sits off your ear. So you definitely get a lot more volume with this headset and also a lot more bass. So definitely great if you want to turn up the volume and jam out to some Beat Saber. Now for the microphone, this was by far my biggest disappointment in the headset. The microphone is not great. Russell, I love Russell. Russell's great. Yeah. All right, where am I standing? Like it's not terrible, but for me as a content creator who's streaming from a headset, it is really nice to have a high quality microphone. Uh, but unfortunately this one didn't quite cut it for content creation. But for most people, this isn't a big deal. A majority of people won't really ever use a microphone, maybe in occasional multiplayer lobbies. So generally this is not a big deal for a lot of people. But if you are a content creator, you can pick up something like the Antlion Mod Mic, which just attaches and you can have microphone audio wirelessly. Now the Vi Pro 2 has a few different features you may need to consider depending on your VR needs. If you want to do full body tracking, you'll need a headset that uses Lighthouse trackers. The most popular Vive trackers is what makes that possible. You attach these to your feet and your waist and that's what gives you full body tracking in games like VR Chat or if you want to use avatars in games like Beat Saber. These are the new Vive tracks that just came out and I have a more in-depth video about these linked down below. So VR headsets like the Oculus Quest or the Rift S or the Vive Cosmos or the HP Reverb G2 can't easily work with these things. You'll need those Lighthouse trackers that the Vive Pro 2 uses. Another new accessory just came out is the Vive Facial Tracker. The Vive Pro 2 officially supports this tracker and it sits underneath the headset to accurately track your mouth movements. This could be really useful potentially for games like VR Chat or VTubing where you use an avatar to do live streaming or videos. 
because it's close to your mouth, it's gonna be able to accurately match all your mouth movement and to create a more realistic and immersive avatar experience. But the big feature that's unique to the Vipro 2 is the ability to use a wireless adapter. You can purchase the wireless adapter separately and completely get rid of cables and make a more immersive VR experience, which is definitely really great for dancing around in Beat Saber. I personally haven't tried using a wireless adapter before, but I know people who use one and refuse to use anything else. They refuse to go to any headset that has cables now. So they're married to using the HTC Vive and the wireless adapter. They say once you go wireless, you can't go back. So no other headset supports this apart from the HTC Vive models and the Cosmos Elite. The Valve Index does not support a wireless adapter and to be honest, the cables on the Index drive me crazy. They are always, always tangled and knotted and it's becoming a real big problem to be honest. So the wireless adapter alone is a really good option to consider investing in the HTC Vive Pro 2. Now there's another reason why a lot of people would opt for the Vive Pro 2 over the Valve Index and that is it's not available in Australia, or most countries for that matter. I live in Australia and the Valve Index is not available. If I want to buy a VR headset with lighthouse tracking and a high resolution headset that's comfortable and nice to use, I'm pretty much limited to the Cosmos Elite. So there really hasn't been any headset that's made me want to upgrade, except for now. I'm so relieved that a decent PC VR headset exists in Australia, because outside of this, there's just been no option. So I'm just really, really happy this exists and we now have the option to buy a decent headset in Australia. When it comes to cost, HTC are selling the Vive Pro 2 at a cost of 749 USD or 1,299 Australian. This kit doesn't involve the lighthouse trackers or controllers. So this is a really good option if you already own the HTC Vive and you're looking to upgrade your headset. And don't worry, the Vive Pro 2 works with lighthouses 1.0 if you own them already. In conclusion, I did really enjoy using the Vive Pro 2. It exceeded my expectations in terms of comfort and the quality of the resolution. The resolution is really impressive and I'm really relieved with the comfort of it. Using the Vive Pro 2 has made me really consider if I do wanna go down the wireless option. Having a wireless adapter so I can dance around and Beat Saber and not worry about cables would be such a joy. So now that's a really big thing for me to consider. I know a lot of people will ask how it compares to the Valve Index and to be honest, I think they're pretty on par. Really comes down to how much you're willing to spend and how important resolution is to you and the ability to do wireless. So let me know in the comments down below if you think you'll be upgrading to the Vive Pro 2. Thank you everyone for watching this video and a massive thank you to HTC for sponsoring this video and allowing me to check out the new HTC Vive Pro 2. I try to make this video easy to understand for new VR users or younger audiences. I know a lot of these tech videos can be a little overwhelming because they use a lot of high level language. So if you did find this video useful, please give it a thumbs up because it supports my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!